climbing down a two-lane highway in California, and this is this is pretty much what California is like all the time. I live in a place where it's 70 degrees and sunny, 320 days out of the year. So it probably rained once in the last, I don't know, 30 days or so. But anyway, um, yeah. So I. Uh, I take the Mini on trips like this quite often um, for my actual job and uh, you know I'll often be driving it two three hours away and you do like a round trip one day so I might spend you know four six eight, sometimes eight hours in one day in the car um, it's not the most comfortable vehicle I've ever driven on trips like that. My, my Mercedes-Benz E-Class, um, or my GLK 350, probably the E-Class, the E350 that I had would be the most comfortable. Um, but, uh, it, it is a great little car for these types of trips. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in sixth gear, I'm cruising at 70 miles an hour. Um, my average consumption since leaving my house is, uh, 31.6. Um, and honestly, that and my speed are a little low because I sat at a construction zone for about 15 minutes this morning and stopped traffic waiting for the pilot car to usher me through. So, and, and I'm not exaggerating when I say it was 15 minutes. Um, so, you know, like right now I'm doing 70 and six gear and I'm on like a pretty flat surface. And, uh, I'm getting uh, 35, 36 is my instantaneous going from, you know, 33 to 40, give or take, so, it's kind of nice, um, with gas prices being what they are, and, you know, here in California, it's, here in California, it's six dollars a gallon, um, which is higher than the whole rest of the country, except, I don't know, maybe Hawaii and Alaska, I think, are both higher than us, but, um, what I really like about the car is that it's, um, it has power, you know, it's, it's, it's a little car, so it's not like, you know, it's not a 500 horsepower race car or something like that, but it's a tiny car with a reasonable amount of power, so when you come up behind somebody, it's really easy to pass them, um, you know, it's, it's not the worst visibility, it's not the best visibility, it sits pretty low, it's easy for people to miss you, um, but I've got a bright red roof and stuff, so it does kind of stand out, um, but it's just a fun car to drive, you know, especially on roads like this, windy, um, you know, two-lane roads, um, it's, it's fun, and, uh, it's, it's surprisingly quick, like, it, it's still pulling at 120, 130, pretty hard, um, I don't know what it would top out at with the tune and, you know, some of the work that we've done to it, but, uh, I would imagine it's probably 140, mid-140 range, maybe 150, I really honestly don't know, but I've been super happy with the car. Um, a couple other things I'm working on, obviously I have a, an improved garage hat on my head, so I'm, I'm working on figuring out apparel. Um, not. I don't know that I'll ever get to a point where I can sell apparel. Maybe I will. I don't know. A lot of YouTubers do, but that's not really the point. I want to be able to rep my own brand and rep my own business. And what I've been challenged with is finding somebody who can create apparel that I actually want to wear. Um, so I was working with uh, Rush Order Tees on some t-shirts and they were doing, you know, screen printing for me, and, and they were they were fine, they were expensive, they were fine, um, but I kept having problems with the screen printing failing. So then I started working with Tee Public, and that's been better, and what's nice about Tee Public is they have like an online store, so anybody can buy the apparel, so if somebody did want to buy my apparel, they could go to Tee Public and they could actually pick up a shirt or a mask or a phone case or a, like a dozen different things that T Public just kind of makes with my logo. Um, I'm still having problems with the white not holding up very well. Um, the multicolor isn't bad. The black one is actually holding up really well. 
the black only shows up on a couple different color shirts though. Um, I actually really like, there's like a, a lime green variant that I have, I have three copies of at this point. It's, it's kind of my go-to shirt and I even like green, so it's, you know, it's a strange thing. Um, the hat on my head is a melon, melon A-game hydro. And I found a local embroidery company um, in, in Santa Maria where, uh, you know, somebody was willing to, I could pay a setup fee, they digitized my logo, and they're producing hats on a one-off basis for me. Um, so I dropped this one off and I had them do this. Um, and this is like the first sample, I just got it yesterday. They had it for about a week. And I asked her about getting other hats, um, specifically like a Richardson 112 snapback. Um, I have those from a couple other companies and I like them. Either that or a, like a New Era 3930, or 3039, 39, 3930, that's what it is. Um, but she told me that the Richard the Snapback, she can't really get any inventory right now, which I understand. And I see that even like Obsessed Garage doesn't have any hats available on their website right now. Um, I did find. Uh, a place online, all day shirts that happen to have some inventory. So I bought 12 Richardson snapback blanks and I dropped one of each color off. I got like five different colors. So I dropped one of each color off yesterday for them to make me some improved garage hats in different colors and not quite sure what I'm going to do with those, but I'm just trying, you know, to come up with some samples. Uh, all this crap gets expensive. You know, it's, uh, it's just one of those things that over time, it it kind of adds up. So, you know, I'm a couple hundred dollars in the shirts, uh, probably close to five. And, you know, this single hat on my head was over a hundred dollars. Now, granted, it's it's an expensive hat to begin with, but um, the Richardsons are going to be thirty thirty one dollars my cost by the time I get them actually made. Um, you know, so it's. I mean, I, I guess the, the, the trick is to be able to do volume. So, uh, Obsessed Garage, you know, they've got hats on their website for 25 bucks, but they're probably buying uh, a thousand of them at a time. And, the, you know, that's how they're able to have those prices. But, anyway, um, yeah, so the Mini's running good. It just crossed 50,000 miles. Um, I'm going to be doing a transmission service and a uh, coolant exchange and I've got some stainless steel brake lines and brake fluid and I'll get all of that done. I'm thinking about doing um, pads and rotors at the same time. The car doesn't really need them, but I'd like to put some performance parts on there. Um, so I've been holding off on the brakes until I um, figure out what I want to do there. The um, I'd like to add CarPlay to this, so I think I'm going to do a CarPlay retrofit. Um, there's a couple different brands that make them, I'm not quite sure, but I'll document all of that when I do it. Um, I'm trying to find a good cell phone mount, but CarPlay is the answer, so I just need to get CarPlay going and then not care about the cell phone mount um, and, and just beat them with it. I might mess around some Bav Sound stuff. Um, you know, I added the subwoofer. This has the factory Harman Kardon system, and that setup is actually pretty good. Uh, it works really well. So, um, I, I, I am interested though in, uh, trying to improve it a little bit better or try to improve it a little bit more, maybe get a little bit better transition between, uh, the subwoofer frequencies and the low mid range frequencies. Um, so I might try out some of the, the bav sound, like the front speakers that they offer and just see how they are in comparison to the factory speakers. And if nothing else, it'll make some good content that uh, people might find interesting. I've got a bunch of tools coming from different companies, from Sonic, from Tekton, um, but everything is on back order, so I'm waiting for all kinds of stuff. I, I just got all of my Lutron controllers in for my lighting in my garage and home, so I have to get everything swapped over from those Wi-Fi controlled units to the Lutron Vibe and Pico and get a test on those and see how they are. We just got tires for the Mercedes uh, SLC 300. We picked up a flat in the left rear um, so I ended up, uh, just putting two rears on the car. Um, the car is about 15,000 miles on it. So the Potenzas that were on it weren't gone, but they were, I don't know, they probably had four or 5,000 miles left before they got to the wear bars. 
I don't run my tires until the end. I run my tires to the wear bars and then I just get them replaced. It's not worth the safety risk to me. Um, I did Michelin Pilot Sport 4s, which I've always liked. Um, they're nice and quiet and they ride really well and they're ranked super high. Um, I'm probably going to do those on the Mini as well when uh, it comes time to put tires on this again, but pretty far way off from that. I've put, I don't know, 10,000 miles on these tires. I probably have eight to ten more um, before they're done, which 20,000 miles on a pair of sticky tires, or on a set of sticky tires, uh, really isn't that bad. Um, have an NAD C388 on the way for the garage, I'm going to play around with that, compare it to the, the setup that I have right now with the Blue Sound Node and the Vidar. It was an open box deal that I got from Obsessed Garage, and it was a fairly high discount, so I figured, you know, worst case, if I didn't like it, I could just eBay it when I was done and uh, get my money back. Messing around with, uh, this is a Peak Design Everyday Backpack. I really like that. Um, the one downside of that is we had to buy a second one. So Jessica liked it so much, she wanted one for herself, so she bought a tote, which is fine. Um, the Honda's fine. Just kind of is what it is. I had to put a windshield in it recently because I got a crack in it. Uh, rock chip just turned into a crack really quickly before I was able to get the rock chip fixed. Um, so I put a windshield on it, which was a longer process because it has radar cruise control and they had to uh, calibrate the system. I'm probably going to put a sound system in that um, and then I'll be done with that. I'm on a, I've honestly kind of held off on that because it's fine. I'm just not sure how long I want to keep it. Um, I'm considering swapping it for like a Mini Countryman or maybe a Volvo XC60 or something along those lines. Um, I feel as though I need to have some sort of SUV. Uh, those two vehicles both can't tow um, any weight of any significance. So that's the reason that I've kind of um, not done that. It's uh, the reason why I own the Honda right now. Let's just put it that way. I, I considered the Volvo XC60 and decided not to do it because the uh, the Honda can tow 6,000 pounds and the Volvo can only tow, I think it's 3,000 pounds. And every once in a while I end up trailering a car from somewhere to somewhere and that, you know, couldn't be done. Um, but I don't know. I mean, the, the Honda's fine, but it gets poor gas mileage. It's like... 18 to 20 is my overall average, and I do a lot of highway driving, so it seems like a super low average. Um, it's not really getting any better. The car's got 8,000 miles on it now, so it's, you know, sufficiently broken in, and it's not really improving. Um, the radar cruise control in it kind of sucks, because it doesn't go down to zero miles an hour. It doesn't deal with stop and go traffic. Um, the lane keep assist isn't that great. Like, it's... I, I like Honda, and I'm kind of a Honda boy from way back. I've had three Preludes, two Civics, and a Cord. Um, you know, so this is my seventh Honda, and my, my parents had them too when I was growing up, you know, so I have a lot of experience with them, and their radar cruise control just sucks, you know, so I compare it to my Mercedes that I drove previously, I compare it to the Volvo that I test drove before I bought the Mercedes, and it's just, it, it just sucks. Um, since then, I've been in a Ford Mustang Mach-E that I've driven and a Model Y, and those are both fantastic. It just it seems like there's some advantages there. So, I don't know. I'm considering maybe swapping that for something different. Um, maybe going to a sedan and not having an SUV. You know, doing something like a Volvo S60 or, uh, I don't know, maybe an F80 M3 or something like that. I'm not sure. It's a shared car between me and the wife, so I have to figure out something that works for both of us. Um, but I would really like something that's a little bit better on longer trips, and you know, so I don't have to drive the Mini so much. I, I love the Mini, but when you drive a car on long trips all the time, when you're driving it for work and you're spending hours and hours and hours in it commuting, I, I think that it ruins some of the, some of what makes the car special, you know, the enjoyable nature of it, the fact that you get in the car and you, like, want to drive it, so, 
Anyway, I'm like 15 minutes into this, so I'll just wrap it up. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff that's coming up, um, a lot of different content. I'm finally monetized on YouTube. Um, I started August. Uh, I started August 1st. It's currently August 22nd. I've made like $35. I'm averaging about $1.80 a day. It seems $1.70, $1.80 a day, something like that. So, you know, at this rate, I'll probably be in the $50 a month range. Um, I think I'll do a separate video on that and just talk about how, like, the process was like to get monetized on YouTube and, you know, set up and all of the back end stuff because it was really difficult for me to find that information when I was getting started. YouTube has a lot of stuff on being a creator and, and different things like that, but it's just, I don't know. It's not, it's not as clear, I think, as I could make it, so. Um, anyway, I appreciate you watching, and if you're not subscribed, I, I hope that you will subscribe and that you find my content valuable. And, you know, if you have any feedback for me, positive, negative, you know, even even if it's something like, hey, uh, I would really like to see X, Y, Z content, post a, post a comment. I read every single comment. I respond to every single comment or at least like every single comment if there's not like really, I don't know, a necessary response. If you're asking me a question, I'm gonna respond to it. If you're, you know, stating something, then I'll, I'll like it or something, sometimes respond, whatever. But. Um, I see every single comment, I, I personally read every single comment, most of them I respond to, and there's some interaction back and forth, and you know, that's what I wanted to do originally with this, I wanted to build uh, a channel with some engagement and some some content that people might find useful, and maybe, you know, maybe it ends up building a community or whatever, sharing some of my life with you guys, so thank you for watching, and hopefully you'll have a great time.